Now let us talk about some surgical airways, right? Surgical airways like your surgical tracheostomy or cricothyroidotomy, right? So, <coughs> your tracheostomy, tracheostomy, the surgical tracheostomy, we can also do non-surgical tracheostomy like percutaneous tracheostomy. So, we'll here talk about tracheostomy and something called cricothyroidotomy. Cricothyroidotomy. Now, this is airway securement in emergency. This is done in emergency when we cannot intubate, cannot ventilate. Emergency during unable to intubate, unable to ventilate. Unable to intubate and ventilate. Okay. So, cricothyroidotomy. Let us first discuss it. So, we know this is your thyroid cartilage and this is your cricoid, right? In between them is your cricothyroid membrane. This is the cricothyroid membrane, okay? When we pierce, this is a very easy membrane to pierce, right? This is thyroid prominence. This is the cricoid. In between is cricothyroid membrane. So what we do, we take a need, uh, needle, a thick bore needle, right? For needle cricothyroidotomy. For needle crico thyroidotomy. We take the needle and we pierce the cricothyroid membrane. Attach it with a 2cc syringe and a connector and we do the ventilation. So that is called cricothyroid cricothyroidotomy with large bore cannula. Largest bore cannula which you have like your 14 gauge or 16 gauge. Then we can also go for the surgical cricothyroidotomy. Surgical crico thyroidotomy in this or we call it tube cricothyroidotomy in this we can use a set through which we can insert the cricothyroid membrane and properly put a lower a smaller size endotracheal tube through it okay so this is cricothyroidotomy done in emergency done in emergency remember it is done in emergency and this is just a temporary way of securing the airway for ventilation not a definitive management of airway okay for definitive surgical airway we have to do tracheostomy now how do we ins do tracheostomy tracheostomy can be done surgically or it can be done uh, percutaneously and this is a tracheostomy tube tracheostomy tube okay so tracheostomy tube can be inserted we can do surgical tracheostomy or we can do percutaneous percutaneous tracheostomy okay or percutaneous tracheostomy or surgical tracheostomy now let for both we are inserting this tracheostomy tube for tracheostomy we have to insert the tube between second and third tracheal ring so if i compare with cricothyroidotomy cricothyroidotomy we are putting the needle in between thyroid and cricoid this is the cricothyroid membrane high up in the neck for tracheostomy just Two, one or two centimeter above the sternal notch. So low in the neck here. This is the point for tracheostomy. This is the point for cricothyroidotomy. So if in exam, uh, uh, image based question is asked and the needle is inserted high in the neck between thyroid and cricoid, it is cricothyroidotomy. Low in the neck, it is tracheostomy, right? Tracheostomy is more of a elective procedure, right? Tracheostomy tube is inserted between second and third tracheal ring and it is more of elective procedure, planned procedure, okay? Now let us talk, uh, so this is the tracheostomy tube, one of the tracheostomy tube with, so, uh, with uh, the cuff. So let us talk about few different type of tracheostomy tube which is asked in exam. So we have cuffed tracheostomy tube, as you can see here, this is used for positive pressure ventilation, for positive pressure ventilation, on ventilator in patient in ICU, right? Tracheostomy, when we have to go for long-term mechanical ventilation, we change the cuffed endotracheal tube to cuffed tracheostomy tube. Then if this is not there, then cuffless tube, uncuffed tube. So uncuffed tube is used during weaning from the tracheostomy tube or decannulation, used during decannulation when we are removing the, the tracheostomy tube from the patient. Okay. 
It is not used during mechanical ventilation. We need a proper seal by a cuff for mechanical ventilation, which is not there with uncuffed tube. Then we have fenestrated tube. Fenestrated tube, there are, there are, let's say, uh, there are openings in the tube. This is for the air to pass. And this is when we are encouraging the patient for, to speak up, okay? So fenestrated tube, there are openings, openings in wall of tube. Now this is used for, used for voice, in, for voice production, right? So when the patient is encouraged for voice production, this is used. But number of time, there's a risk of aspiration when we are putting fenestrated tube on risk of, uh, let's say, granuloma formation. Then we have metallic tube. Metallic tube is not used for uh, in patients who are on ventilator because they don't have a connector for ventilation. They're only used when patient cannot maintain the airway for some reason, mass or tumor, but can breathe. So this just creates patency. This can be removed, washed, and then again reinserted in a patient. So metallic tube is used for long term, term uh, tracheostomy tracheostomy in patient not on ventilator not on ventilator okay just to keep their airway patent okay so these are the different tracheostomy tube as i told you this is more of elective procedure cricothyroid let me compare it cricothyroidotomy this is quick relatively easy and this is an emergency procedure tracheostomy this is a hole between second and third tracheal ring this is not emergency and it is more of the elective procedure and if you will do it in emergency there's a risk of a lot of complication associated with it so in emergency we only go for cricothyroidotomy so these are the difference between cricothyroidotomy and tracheostomy so this is all i want to talk about in the surgical airways and the airway difficult airway management i will discuss as a separate topic in complications thank you